You're burning slow. I say free. You say Tiana. Free. Tiana. Free. Tiana. Free. Tiana. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. My name is Curtis Briggs. I'm one of the attorneys for Tiana Arada. We're here for three reasons today. One, to respectfully ask Dan Dow to reject these charges as they've been recommended by the Slow Police Department. not just for moral reasons, but because these charges are false. Two, we're calling for the immediate termination of Deanna Contrell, Police Chief of SLO. Three, I'm asking the citizens of SLO to keep an open mind because you're called for this jury, you're going to need to hear the real facts, not what Deanna Control put out in the media. We're going to need you to serve on this jury. <laughs> Chief Control's actions are vile, they're reckless. The reason we are here today is because she retaliated against Tiana Rada, a beautiful young woman who's doing everything that we want American youth to do. Chief Control's blunder drew national attention and put slow in the spotlight In a national controversy, Chief Control's blunder amplified demonstrations and protests. Chief Control's blunder jeopardized the peace and safety of this community. <laughs> Chief Control's police officers deserve better than that. Instead, having slow devote money towards training, more time off, better equipment, learning how to de-escalate, pay raises. She's going to have this city spend millions of dollars litigating this case. She's robbing the taxpayers and the citizens of what they are entitled to, which is justice. Finally, I have a message for the citizens of SLO. I was born and raised in Southern California. This community is built on principle. SLO citizens believe in the truth. They believe in the Constitution. They believe in the principles of our founding fathers. We may disagree on politics, we may disagree on race, we may disagree on a lot of things, or we might agree, we might be surprised. But what no citizen of SLO disagrees on is that no one wants this innocent young woman wrongfully convicted and going to prison. Thank you. You're going to hear from about 10 speakers. All of them are extremely powerful. Many of them are members of this community, business leaders, social leaders, moral leaders. Please hear them out. Thank you.
morning, everyone, and thank you for making it out this morning. My name is Melissa Elizalde, and I am a 20-year-old activist, student, and the campaign manager for Free Tiana Coalition. I have been an organizer in the community advocating for black and brown lives alongside my best friend, Tiana Arada. I knew that I had a responsibility to myself and all, and all the BIPOC community to be the voice of the voiceless. My whole life I have struggled on where I fit in in society because I was systematically taught I was less than for being a Mexican woman. As I got older, it became clear we are not living in post-racial America. Racism did not end when they told me it did in school. I began to realize that the very things I was being bullied in, for, in school for was blatant, blatant racism. Ever since I became aware of the systematic and social oppression in our society, I began learning how to use my voice. Following the death of George Floyd, Tiana, myself, our friends, and our supportive slow community came together to not let injustices go unseen in San Luis Obispo. What we want to see is a community who loves and supports each other, a place where all can call home and be comfortable, happy, and proud of that. July 21st at 4 p.m. was a beautiful day full of clear skies and a the pain and terror that I felt. However, to this day, I still have hope for our community of San Luis Obispo and a country as a whole. While I was being escorted to my car the night, that night in a state of fear and shock, a random communi community member, a mother, someone I had never met before approached me. In the midst of my crying, she pulled me close and hugged me and let me know that she's there for me and will not allow this to continue. That gave me hope that we can be an eye-opener and people can realize we have the power to come together and support and embrace everyone in the community. I will continue for the rest of my life to stand up for black and brown and all marginalized communities. Myself and the Free Tiana Coalition demand that all charges not be filed against Tiana Arada and any other protester arrested. Thank you. Buenos dias, San Luis Obispo. My name is Rita Casaverde. I'm the chair of the Slow County Democratic Party. I don't pretend to represent every single Democrat in this county, but I am here proudly representing the party that welcomed me, a brown immigrant woman with open arms. I'm here today because of two reasons. First, this is personal. July 21st was a different day to each one of us here. For me, it was an awful day from the get-go. I've experienced racism by individuals and institutions in this county many times. So waking up to the news of Sheriff Ian Parkinson saying that he had never seen any indication of systemic racism in this county was insulting. The same day, we witnessed hateful comments towards protesters in the DA's Facebook post. That evening, Tiana was arrested. It's that level of hostility that makes it hard to be here. It is also the small things. For example, many years ago, I was at a concert and I bought my favorite sweatshirt. It has the name of a song that I really like. The song is called Time Bomb. I love this sweatshirt, but I'm brown. I can't wear that sweatshirt. It says time bomb written all over it. You might think it's silly that I'm overthinking this, but I've seen too many comments in the last couple of weeks talking about Tiana's riot t-shirt 
to know that I'm not overthinking it. We don't all share the same freedom, even if they're screaming about it. The second reason Let them hear us. Woo! The second reason I'm here today, we need to move forward. Look, I don't think everyone in this country is ready to have an honest conversation about race. Some even in this community, I think we'll support the status quo that benefits some and prosecutes others. But I think they're the minority. I think that the majority of our county is ready to move forward and deal with temporary discomfort in order to get loud and long lasting positive change. This here today, you here today, is a great step forward. Today, we are donating our voices or time to have these tough conversations. And we're coming together stronger because of Tiana and because many young people who are non-conforming and that are asking for better. So County needs Tiana's vibrant, colorful, and powerful self to be freed and the Slow County Democratic Party is here to support it. I'll close my statement with a Mexican proverb. Trataron de enterrarnos, no sabían que éramos semillas, which translates to, they tried to bury us, they didn't know we were seeds. Thank you. Good morning, friends. My name is Rick Stolmeyer. I'm a Navy veteran. I wore the cloth of our nation to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and that Constitution has enshrined in it freedom of speech, especially speech that we don't agree with. So I honor the speech here, and I honor the speech across the street. I love all of you. I'm also the founder of Mind Body. My co-founders and I started a scrappy little company in my garage 20 years ago, and today it's the largest private employer on the Central Coast. I care deeply about economic opportunity and jobs, and we've got a challenge here on the Central Coast. And that challenge is entirely wrapped up in this topic. The lack of diversity in this community, in addition to being a moral and ethical issue, is also an economic issue for us. I'm a founding member of REACH, the regional coalition of local leaders that are striving for economic opportunity. And I'm a father and a husband. Jill and I have raised four kids here in San Luis Obispo. We're committed to this community, and we plan to spend the rest of our lives here. We count among our circle of friends, people, frankly, on both sides of the street. We have friends that, that we have a deputy sheriff who's a friend. She was one of the first responders in Napomo when that mentally ill man got out of a car and started shooting people. Those, those first responders, those CHP and deputy sheriffs saved people's lives last Friday in our community and we owe them a debt of gratitude. Thank you, you're heroes. So what do we have in common here today? I think we all, all of us love this community and we're all worried and afraid for our future. And the events of 2020 have shaken us to our core. Who, could, who of us could have imagined on New Year's Eve what was in store for us in this magical new roaring 20s? A pandemic wreaking havoc on our lives. A pandemic. These horrible killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, bringing to surface deep systemic problems in our country. Problems that, that are really uncomfortable to face, but are realities that have been here for decades and decades. I had, as a middle-aged white dude, I had to come to the, the realization that the promise of equality of the civil rights movement of my childhood, of Martin Luther King and John Lewis and so many other heroes, isn't done yet. They did amazing things. We've made some progress, but it's not done yet. And what I see happening today, what I see in this beautiful audience, and what I see with Tiana, as I see young people who are idealistic, who, who care about our future, and you know what, older folks like me, the future is theirs. 
This will be their country. This will be their society and their community. And I think what they stand up for is powerful, it's important, and it's precious that we have young people who are idealistic and care. That's why I'm here right now. The first time, <laughs> the first time I saw a Black Lives Matter sign was when my daughters, Madison and Elena, uh, 16 and 20 years old, went online on Amazon and ordered one. Okay, the thing shows up on our front door, they plant it in the front yard, and I was like, okay, uh, um, Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I mean, don't all lives matter? You know, and then I didn't really get it at first. I want to admit that to you. And then I began to hear from, from my own children. I heard from our friends and, our, and the Mind Body employees. There are 900 Mind Body employees in this community. I listened to stories of racism and bias. I mean, firsthand, subtle racism and also much more overt racism. Stories of black people being treated as suspect or different simply because of the color of their skin, really, in 2020? I was shocked. So when the Black Lives Matter protest started in our community, I was frankly first surprised at the level of intensity. I mean, um, really? Like, we have that much to be upset about here. I didn't get it because I'm not black and I'm not young. But then I remembered the first rule of parenting, and that is that when your child feels what they feel is re their reality, when they skin their knees and they come home and they're sobbing because uh, they hurt or somebody bullied them at school, a parent doesn't tell their child, no, you don't hurt. That's not real. No, we first acknowledge their pain, we tend to their wounds, and we help them heal. And as parents, we listen, we show compassion, we practice empathy, and then we help them address the problem. And so I feel that that's what needs to happen today with all of the young people here. And can we just take a moment? Can we just take a moment? If you live here on the Central Coast, regardless of how you stand on the issue, would you please just raise your hand as a member of this community? So these are our neighbors. These are our children. Above all, we just need to listen to them. And look, we don't have to agree on everything. Yeah, by the way, how many people have reached out to me since I heard I was going to be here and say, have you seen those video clips? Um, yeah, I can't say I agree with all of it. I can't say that I think that that was all the best way to go about it, but we're all human beings, you know? And I, I put my life on the line for this country to give people the right to speak their mind, even when I disagree with them. And, and the principle at work here is all the right principles. It's the principles of, of freedom, of freedom of speech, of equality and diversity. So while I, I know there are many different points of view represented here today, I believe we can all agree that we have a real problem in our country. I mean, just yesterday, a black man was shot eight times in the back by police officers while he was attempting to get into the car with his children. We don't know the facts yet. We don't know what happened. But my God, what is going on in this country? Yes, of course all lives matter, but the focus right now is there is a specific group of people in our country who have had their lives put at risk, and this isn't opinion, this is fact. The numbers support it, it's data. So black lives matter, absolutely. Just like all of our lives matter. We're living in troubled times. How do we find our way out of this? How do we make our community, our nation, and our world a better place for our children? I don't know exactly, but I think it has something to do with consciously choosing love over fear. It comes from just practicing the hard work of empathy. It's about putting down these damn devices for a few minutes and actually listening to each other and having real conversations. And it comes from assuming good intent. Let's assume that the other person is actually trying to do something good, as most people in the world are trying to do something good. Let's acknowledge their humanity, and let's especially practice these things when there's issues that we disagree about. I had the honor a couple years ago of meeting Michelle Obama, and she said, it is hard to hate up close. And I think in these troubled times, we all need to get a bit closer to each other. That is Jill's and my hope and prayer for San Luis Obispo and for our nation. Thank you.
Hey, I like that. Black Lives Matter. Well, hello, you guys. My name is Melin Martin. I have been born and raised here on the Central Coast. That's what's up. It's been an honor and a privilege to live here my whole life, aside from the four years that I spent in San Diego in college. I currently operate as a junior high youth pastor at New Life Community Church in Pismo Beach. So I'm back here on the Central Coast. Can't get rid of me very soon, I assume. I'll be here for a while. And because I'll be here for a while, that also means that you won't get rid of my voice for a while. I'm also a seminary student, so when I'm not mentoring teenagers, I'm studying. I'm all these things. I'm a student. I'm a leader. I'm a pastor. But before I was any of that, I was a black woman. And I know that a lot of us here on the Central Coast like to quote Oprah, who said San Luis Obispo is the happiest city in America. But Oprah Winfrey didn't go to high school here as a black woman in America. It's easy to paint smiles on this city when you ignore the blatant racism that young black and brown people have been experiencing since the moment they came out of the womb if they were born here, and since the moment they moved here if they're from out of town. I'm a friend of Tiana's, and Tiana Arada has by far become the spearhead of the movement against racism here in San Luis Obispo County. But all of Tiana's opposers seem to enjoy to negate the trauma she's experienced at the hands of racism. See, people don't understand that trauma actually lives in the body. So when someone experiences trauma at the hands of racism, like myself or Tiana, that trauma tends to express itself through panic attacks, through fear, through anxiety, and protest is actually an extremely healthy outlet to release that trauma from our bodies. So physically marching through the streets, physically shouting with everything in our being, physically crying publicly is a healthy, beautiful outlet of trauma. Y'all, Tiana Arada did not choose to spearhead this movement. We, the movement, chose her because we need her. Tiana's voice is not the loudest, but it's filled with purity. It's filled with honesty. It's filled with loyalty. It's filled with love. It's filled with joy. And it's also filled with the echoes of personal tragedy as a result of racism. We need her voice, and just because it challenges and disrupts and confronts our racism does not make it bad. It actually makes it an extremely healthy component of growth. <laughs> Tiana does not hate the Central Coast. Tiana loves the Central Coast so much that she is dedicated day in, day out, week in, week out, month after month to the streets, speaking up for black lives on the Central Coast because she wants us to be better. And the fact that not one thing has been looted and not one riot has, been, has started on the Central Coast is actually directly because of the precedent that Tiana set for us as a leader. So we owe her a giant thank you. Drop her charges. Good morning. My name is Michael Boyer. I'm a founding director of the Diversity Coalition of San Luis Obispo County. 
I'm also a business owner and a community leader working every day to make San Luis Obispo a better place to live. I have run and operated businesses here in San Luis Obispo for over 20 years. I support both the business community and Black Lives Matter demonstrations. They are not mutually exclusive. We are working as a community to build an anti-racist environment. Disruption is the, is the purpose of protesting. It's a fundamental tenet of our democracy. Black people who are peacefully protesting should not be targeted by police just because they're black. <laughs> By targeting and arresting the high-profile black woman without, without arresting any of the hundreds of white people who also participated in the false imprisonment, The slow PD has proven its role in local systemic racism. Because of this action, I am even more fearful of racial targeting. I've been pulled over 20 plus times in my life. I know what targeting is. I fit the description way too many times. Tiana should be revered for standing up for racial justice. Her courage, her leadership, her enthusiasm will improve black lives in the future. <laughs> Tiana is fighting for our freedom. She is fighting for all of us, all Americans. Tiana is, Amer is an American patriot. As another American hero, Fannie Lou Hamer, once said, nobody is free until everybody is free. Free Tiana. All right, before I start my speech, I wanna say something to you that I say to my kids all the time. If you're making change, you're going to have opposition. I wanna thank those protesters over there on the corner for showing that we're making change. My name is Jen Ford. I am a co-founder of Women's March San Luis Obispo. And I'm a mother of two young women who have been raised in San Luis Obispo County. My daughter, Alexa, who's here, is an activist. She has led protesters on her school campus and in our community. As a mother, I have my fears about her safety and her well-being both in her activism work and in her daily life. Yet I know that unlike Tiana and her mother, there is a long list of worries we never have to think about. We live in the same community, yet we live completely in different worlds. Women's March Slow's mission is to protect women's rights, human rights, our safety, our health, and our planet as we move toward a positive and just future. There is no just future if black lives don't matter. Woo! 
Our neighbors of color have been fighting the injustice of structural racism while being told over and over again that racism doesn't exist here by those who claim to support them and by those who claim to protect them. <sighs> Judging from the sidelines is only an option if your life and your future are not at stake. As a mother of two teenagers, I have seen young people rise up in the name of justice. I have seen them fight for a future that would be truly equitable and inclusive, imagining the world where diversity is celebrated because it makes our communities stronger. For a large part of their lives, they have been witnessing the crumbling of our democracy, the deterioration of our environment, and the abandonment of our values. Yet their moral compass points towards a just future. Deanna, deser sorry. Deanna deserves a future for which she fights, and she would, I would like to help her and all of our children get there. She deserves to be free. She deserves to shine her light in our community right now. We have the chance to do the right thing. Women's March San Luis Obispo organizers stand with Tiana and youth leaders who carry the weight. We call on District Attorney Dan Dow to not pursue the recommended charges. And we state loud and clear that Black Lives Matter, period. Thank you. Good morning, San Luis Obispo. <laughs> My name is Courtney Hale, and I moved to this town in high school. Service to this community is in my blood, as my father, Alan, and my mother, Barbara, both did a lot of heavy lifting to make this town better. I unexpectedly moved back in 2013 and was dissatisfied with the almost childlike refusal of San Luis Obispo to acknowledge that race matters in this community. This refusal was accompanied by, and in some ways even anchored in, the myopic, faulty math that posits that a lack of black people somehow equals a lack of anti-blackness. In 2016, I co-founded Race Matters. We've provided anti-racism education, works to amplify black voices through a wide range of cultural and arts projects, and unapologetically carved out black so social spaces. Yet still, a code of silence around race persisted in many spaces, and an overall air of contentment remained. We needed to be pushed through discomfort by bold, bold voices like Tiana's. like Tiana's and like the other youth organizers who have forced us to hold the magnifying glass to this once named happiest city in America. The process of reckoning and growth that Slow is experiencing right now with all its pains and all of its awkwardness carries possibilities for transformation. Can we create a radically inclusive community of belonging I believe that we can. But doing so requires that we tap into precisely the qualities that our youth leaders embody so powerfully. Creativity, imagination, boldness, openness, courage. Rather than silencing them, we should embrace the willingness of the youth to speak hard truths, to raise challenging questions, and to insist on the possibility of a better future for this community. We should uplift young leaders like Tiana and appreciate the value and the vision she offers to all of us as we seek to learn and grow to transform ourselves. I urge District Attorney Dan Dow to forge a path towards healing 
and towards growth by not pursuing the recommended charges against Tiana Arada. Free Tiana! Hello, thank you for being here. I'd like to look around at all our friends out here, our friends out here. My name is Michelle Arada. I was born in San Luis Obispo. I graduated from San Luis High. I'm a mother, I'm an advocate, I'm a volunteer in our local community, and I'm a teacher. I'm also Tiana's mom. The sort of trauma, fear, terror that has been inflicted on our family since before the arrest and the magnitude and the exponential trauma that has happened since her arrest is not something that I can speak on without breaking down. When I look at you guys, I see a strength. When I see my friends, young people that I consider an extension of my family, I feel strength, but I still feel fear. And I love San Luis Obispo, but in that love also comes accountability. And for me, people say, well, why can't we do things with love? We are doing things with love. Love includes difficult conversations. Love includes talking to people, your family, about racism, about oppression, about systems that have failed. This is about love. This is not political. This is a human rights issue. And how dare they take it to a political level? This is a human rights issue. Racism is a human rights issue. My daughter's life is at stake here. Her future is at stake. She is my world. Do not let them take her from me. We need her and we need all of you. Thank you. Hello. First off, I want to say thank you to everyone out here because this shows me hope. My devotion to this cause is nothing new. I moved to San Luis Obispo when I was 16. I was so typically cast as an outsider with all communities that I interacted with, but I grew to make San Luis my home. Growing up, I attended 10 different schools from kindergarten to graduation. I rapidly understood my role as someone deemed external, and it became critical to me to integrate every type of person, to show love and hospitality to all facets of people, especially outcasts. At 14, I attended my first protest following the death of Mike Brown. Soon after that, I began organizing. I was the youngest in my group. I stepped into my shoes in hopes of fulfilling a role. Through every type, shape, and form of community work and outreach, I learned more. I learned about myself. I learned about my community. I learned about the power dynamics and social structures here in this nation. 
I learned the importance of mentors and fellowships and the power we hold collectively. <sighs> my passion, my goal, and my energy is directed towards enacting change. This is not something that can come from divisiveness in the ideology of separateness. There's always going to be moments that emphasize hopelessness and make us question why we're here. But you're showing right now that we're here as a community. We are stronger. Our first basic step is understanding and embracing the role of empathy in our movement. There's a lot I'm trying to accomplish. I turned 20 years old this summer. I'm a young woman. I hope to be a role model to people and to speak for those who don't have a voice, who aren't able to come out and protest, who are too occupied trying to survive to be out here fighting for other people's lives. I want to be able to provide the courage to let people flourish, to take down these systems that are failing every marginalized community. We must out-organize. Being black in America, being a minority in America, being brown, gay, queer, trans, every day we deal with counter-protesters. Every day. We are stronger and we are more resilient. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. We will not be silenced. We are students, we are teachers, we are parents, we are community members. All of y'all who got on the bus, make some noise. Our folks are skipping. 
skipping classes or trying to do them on their phones on the bus, right? Our folks are missing work. Our folks left their children. I left my children sleeping in their beds at 3 o'clock in the morning because Tiana's freedom is about all of our freedom. So we are grateful to have traveled and arrived safely. I'm grateful to have traveled and arrived safely with these beautiful, powerful people, including Sister Trisha Michael, who is the twin sister of Keisha Michael, who was murdered by Inglewood police four years ago. Say her name, Keisha Michael. Say her name. Say her name. Say her name. Ashe. I want to be very clear that the struggle that we are engaged in, the struggle that Tiana is forging here in San Luis Obispo is not a theoretical struggle. This is a struggle about real lives, about real people. When Inglewood police killed Keisha Michael and Mark Quentin Sandlin sleeping in their cars, they stole the parents of seven children. This is not theoretical. When we talk about standing in the name of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Anthony McLean and so many others, the thousands of black folks who are killed by police every year, it's not about theory. It's about freedom. It's about life. It's about preserving the sanctity of black life. It's what we mean when we say black lives matter. So I want to be clear, as we walked through this beautiful town and walked past that mission, we were rem reminded that this is a country that is built on the stolen land of indigenous people and the stolen lives, labor, and freedom of black people. And when I say that, I absolutely mean the folks, our folks, our ancestors who were stolen from the shores of Africa and had to thrust off the chains of chattel slavery. I'm absolutely summoning in names like David Walker and Henry Highland Garnett and Harriet Tubman and Biddy Mason who helped to establish California, right? I'm absolutely calling on those names and I'm also summoning the names of those like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Anthony McLean and Keisha Michael and Waukesha Wilson and all of these names that line these steps. When our ancestors struggle for freedom, we have to remember that this is a state that is built upon the stolen land of indigenous people and the stolen lives of black people. And when we rise up, when we rise up and demand freedom as Tiana has done, the full power of the state will descend upon you. We have to be reminded that Martin Luther King went to jail 40 times. That as we think about this political season, Fannie Lou Hamer was beaten in a jail for demanding black inclusion in the Democratic Convention. We have to think about even what those of us among us, I think about my own life and my own cases. I've been arrested six times. Only last year I was facing charges that would have brought me, could have brought me three and a half years in prison. But I'm here and I'm free. You know why? You know why? You know what beats the power of the state? The power of the people. The power of the people. The power of the people wins every time. So we won't allow the state to steal the life and the freedom of Tiana because we're going to stand with her. We're going to stand with her. We continue to demand her freedom. We continue to say free Tiana. We continue to say free Tiana because in freeing Tiana, we free ourselves. In freeing Tiana, we usher in freedom in the names of all of those who walked before us. In freeing Tiana, we make black lives matter. 
and we will win. We will win. Free, 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 free. Black lives, we matter here. 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 All right, what up, y'all? My name is Kendrick Sampson. I'm an actor. I'm an activist, co-founder of Build Power. I've been rolling with Black Lives Matter Los Angeles for about five years now. I'm all good, I'm all good, thank you. Um, I wanna be clear here that the system is corrupt and our goal is to abolish this system of slave catching that is policing policing is the legacy of slave catching if you didn't know now you know we're here to abolish the legacy of slave catching but while it's still here we demand you take your oppressive hands off our sister. Right now, white supremacy over there and all over is holding on by tooth and nail. We see you trying to protect and hoard and hold on to the resources that you looted and stole from our people and indigenous people. You see us demanding justice. You see us continue to win, and you are doing everything you can to prevent us from achieving our goal of true liberation. So we have to protect each other now more than ever, and we will. We stand in radical, loving community and sacrifice time, resources, and energy we take extreme measures to stand with, encourage, heal, and protect one another. And that's why I'm here in slow right now. On indigenous Chumash and Solomon land today. To use my privilege and our platform to keep winning, to keep protecting, to keep healing. Dan Dow, you've let this go on for too long. Reject these charges. Slow police, police chief, and those in this town that support these charges, you should be ashamed of yourself. You are on the wrong side of history. You are on the side of the slave catcher. You are on the side that will lose. Tiana, these excessive charges are nothing new. This is an old tactic that they've used on many li liberators before you, including Dr. Melina Abdullah. Same he some here with us today. The oppressor criminalizes, get this, I, you know, because it's a little wordy. The oppressor criminalizes the liberator so that the oppressor can look like the liberator when they lock us up. A wolf in sheep's clothing. You stand in the vein of many liberators and these ancestors are here with you today and they are walking with you every day and they are proud of you. Sometimes it's not enough to say we're with you. Sometimes we gotta pull up and show others we mean business. And that's why we're here today. Thank you, Tiana. Thank you for your love for us, for taking a strong stance against the leg legacy of slave catching and oppression. Thank you for your sacrifice for us. 
We will continue to fight with you. We will continue to win. As we say, when we fight, when we fight, when we fight, when we fight, black lives, they matter here. Yeah. Black lives, they matter here. Yeah. Say defund the police. Say defund the police. Say defund the police. Say defund the police. I say thank you, Tiana. What a do team! San Luis Obispo in the house! No, y'all, I'm not convinced. We got Dan Down needs to hear us, even though I hear he's out of town. How we doing, San Luis Obispo? How we doing, team? My name is Patrice Cullors, and I'm one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter. I'm also one of the members of the Free Tiana Coalition. Across the street, we have counter-protesters, full of hate and division and a deep desire to silence what is joyful and healing and beautiful about Black Lives Matter. Across the street, there are counter protesters who are willing to use racism as a tool for their hate. Across the street, there are protesters who have shown up only to sow the sickness called racism. And right here, in this crowd, behind me and in front of me, we are the people who believe in Black Lives Matter. We are the people who believe in the healing of black communities. We are the people who believe black people deserve not just to survive, but thrive. Throughout history, black communities have fought for our rights, for our freedom, and our self-determination. People like Dr. King and Fannie Lou Hamer and Ella Baker and John Lewis and Diane Nash all risked their lives for black people, all risked their lives for this country, all risked their lives for so-called American democracy. Tiana Arada, she is a part of that legacy. A legacy of young black people who have taken to the streets to make sure that this place, this place that we call the United States of America sees us, believes us, and ensures our freedom. Tiana took to the streets to create peace and justice, and she has been met with criminaliz criminalization. This town, Dan Dow, we are calling on you to reject these charges. We are calling on you to show up for black lives. We are calling on you to leave those counter-protesters in the dust. Tiana Arada deserves our praise. Tiana Arada deserves our praise. Tiana Arada deserves our praise. Not a threat to be in prison, not a threat to be in a jail cell, not handcuffs, not badges. She deserves our praise.
San Luis Obispo, do not let her down. Do not let black people down in this city and in this county. Make sure she is free. Make sure that these charges are rejected. And if they dare to take this to trial, put your bodies on the line. Because that is what Tiana has done for us. That is what she has done for us. And we're gonna shout this chant and prayer that we end all of our protests off. We're gonna chant this so the counter protesters can, can hear us. We're gonna chant this so Dan Dow, who's out of town, can hear us. So Deanna Cantrell can hear us. So your sheriff can hear us. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It's our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must like each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must like each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. One more time, y'all. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must fight each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Ashe, y'all. We are wrapping up at this time on behalf of everyone. Thank you very much for turning out. This, we are winning this fight, but this is just the beginning. If Dan Dow files any charges whatsoever against Tiana, we need to amplify this by 10. We need to build momentum. We may be in trial within three months during times of COVID when we won't get a broad jury poll. Who will show up to jury duty during COVID? People across the street. So we need you. We need you to show up to jury duty. We need you to register to vote. We need you to talk about this with your neighbors. This is just the beginning. Thank you, Slo.